All right, we are just a few days away from Georgia's annual G-Day scrimmage. There's a lot to look out for, and in this video, I'm going to be breaking down just a few players that I think are going to possibly turn some heads on Saturdays. A lot of younger players, hungry players that the average Georgia fan may not know about right now might be tuning in for G-Day and say, oh, that guy's new. Who is that? Oh, this new guy's making plays. Oh, there's a fresh face freshman over here that looks good. Oh, here's a new transfer making plays over here. I'm going to talk about all of it, right? No notes in front of me. I'm just going from the top of the dome, maybe a guy or two at each position group that may surprise you, right? So got to talk about the quarterbacks first. We know what we have in Carson Beck, right? At least the staff knows what they have in Carson Beck. With Ryan Puglisi, the incoming freshman already on campus, uh, he's a little banged up right now. So in my opinion, we're going to see a lot of Gunnar Stockton, as we should. This is the third spring. He's entering his third year on the roster. I'm excited to see the development. He talks about playing in the Orange Bowl, uh, how much that meant to him, how much confidence that gave him. And the staff has been very high on Gunnar ever since high school. They know what he's capable of, and we're not going to be able to see him running the ball much at G-Day, but I'd like to see him throw it like 50 times, right? Again, you want to see Carson Beck improve and take steps forward, and he should, but I, it, if it were me, Gutter Stockton would be playing both sides on both teams, slinging it. Right, I want to see as much Gunner Stockton on Saturday as possible. I want to see some good. I want to see maybe a little bad that he can learn from. Right, um, but definitely a guy to keep an eye on. I think it should be a big day for him, mainly because they don't have a lot of scholarship quarterbacks. We're going to see a walk-on quarterback or two, but I think it's important uh, for Gunner Stockton to kind of let it loose a little bit and you know play his style of ball. I want to see Gunner Stockton at running back. Could be a Roger Roberts and Andrew Paul scenario. Um, probably some Cash Jones in there as well. I don't know how much we're going to see from Trevor Etienne. We should see him a little bit. Don't think we're going to see Branson Robinson really at all. Uh, maybe we see some of um, you know the the incoming freshman Chauncey Bowens, but this could be a deal where you get a lot of Cash Jones, Andrew Paul, Roger Robinson, a lot of you know runs up the middle. Uh, I don't know how many flashy runs we're going to have, uh, but I do think they're going to run the ball with kind of those bigger bowling ball backs back there. So not super exciting from a run game standpoint is what I'm predicting. A tight end, because we're going to stay with the offense. The offense is fun. Yeah, Oscar Delp is going to get some catches his way, uh, but watch out for Lawson Lucky. Uh, I, I just feel like G-Day is always big for the backup tight ends, right? I still think Jackson Harris probably holds the G-Day record for most catches. He may have caught five or six passes, if that, in his career in the fall. Dude probably caught 25, 30 passes at G-Day, right? So it, it's a safety valve for some of these quarterbacks. Uh, but Oscar Delp is a really good player. He's going to see the ball. But Lawson Lucky, who had a really good spring last year, you know, just getting there as a freshman, he can play. And he's going to play a lot this fall. I think we're going to see a good bit from him in G-Day. Um, and then Jaden Riddell, uh, the pass-catching freshman tight end that a lot of people are talking about. Very eye on him. Of course, Pierce Sperlin. The guy they signed last year is um, not playing anymore. Excuse me. He was um, medically uh, retired, excuse me, uh, from football as I had my coffee this morning. So got got the little bit of the burps. Um, but just stick with me here. Um, on the offensive line, we know what we're going to get from the starting five uh, or starting six because or starting seven, uh, really. You got your five guys in left guard. Uh, there's one that's not going to be starting, whether it's Micah Morse or Dylan Fairchild. And then at right tackle, if Xavier Truss wins that job, you're still going to see a lot of Monroe Freeling. There are seven quality starters and only five positions. But I want to see the freshmen. That's a massive, massive group. Six big old guys. And a lot of them have really cut some weight. But I want to see what those big freshman offensive linemen look in pads. And I want to see them playing in this game. At wide receiver, I think Colby Young was battling through uh, you know, some injuries or two, but I do think we'll see him out there. I uh, should see a lot of Dom Lovett, a lot of Dylan Bell, um, you know, London Humphreys, Michael Jackson. I want to see those transfers out there making plays. Uh, Ra Ra Thomas, Anthony Evans. There's a lot of receivers. Uh, we'll see how much we see of Sokovi White, the freshman, Nitro Tuggle. So the receivers are there. Cole Spear, I think, could uh, catch a handful of passes in this game. So if you're Carson Beck and Gunnar Stockton, you want to sling it out, you got to sling a, the ball to, to someone, right? 
So I do think there are several wide receivers, uh, mainly Anthony Evans. That's the guy that I've got my eye on. He's played uh, more and more towards the end of the year last year, was a freshman, caught a touchdown from Gunnar Stockton against Florida State. Track speed. He is a speed demon. I think we're going to see a decent amount of him, not only a receiver, but in the return game if they allow guys to return kicks and punts. I don't know exactly what the rules are going to be, but I think there have been years where they didn't return any. Either way, uh, defensively, I'm going to get a look at the secondary for sure. I talked about the receivers. Uh, those guys are playmakers. There's some really good receivers, um, but I want to see how good Ellis Robinson is. KJ Bolton, everyone wants to, you know, keep an eye on the freshmen, as they should. They're really, really good. But I want to see the other cornerback position, uh, Daniel Harris, Julian Humphrey. I want to see those guys battle it out. I want to see some Janelle Aguero at safety. I want to see some of these young guys. Um, you know, Justin Rett um, has been around Ja'Cory Thomas. A lot of these guys are fighting for the playing time that they've patiently waited for. And now it's their turn. And I think we're going to see maybe a, a really hard hit or two, maybe a play in the backfield uh, from some of these safeties. But I'm excited to see what K.J. Bolden and Ellis Robinson have for sure. Two of the best players in the country. They both, I've been told, have had very good springs. I'm excited to see them out there. On the defensive line, I know I keep talking about the freshman, but Jonah Johnny Ajanye, Jonah Joseph Ajanye, borderline five-star. I think one outlet had him as a five-star defensive end uh, from Texas. All potential right now, but you know, for a guy who's only been playing football for a few years, um, he, he, he's coming around to it. He, he's picking it up quickly and he's getting better and better every year. Was almost unblockable last year as a senior uh, playing alongside Justin Williams, a linebacker. I'm going to talk about him in a second, um, but he's a freshman to keep an eye on. I want to see Kristen Miller making plays. I want to see Jordan Hall in there making plays. Jamal Jarrett, um, has he started to become the guy that maybe they need him to be, that Jordan Davis type, massive 330, 40 pound you know, space eater in the middle. Is he able to, you know, beat one of those quality offensive linemen or a double team and make a play in the backfield? We'll see. Uh, but I'm excited to see what the defensive line uh, is going to look like. You know, Kirby was, I don't know if he was a little upset or disappointed or triggered, whatever, but he did not like the fact that rumors were circulating that his defensive line just wasn't making a real impact during some of these spring scrimmages and in practice, mainly because the offensive line is so good. But Kirby's like, I, I like my guys. I've got some veterans, Nazir Stackhouse, Warren Branson. I've got some younger, uh, younger, <laughs> younger, young and hungry. That's a new word, younger. The, those young, talented, hungry players, they're younger. All right. Webster, take a look. Write it down. That's a new word for you right here. Trademark, Coach Debray. Right, um, let's keep moving on. Linebacker, right? No small Munden. We're going to see a lot of C.J. Allen, a lot of Raylan Wilson. Um, don't want to see any missed tackles. That's the, I want to see them active. I want to see them disruptive. I want to see them fly into the football. I want to see them wrap up properly. And, uh, you know, they're going to be trying to tackle some big bruising backs. And I want to see them do it. I want to see them get them to the ground because uh, they're going to be asked to do a lot this fall. But small Munden will return eventually. But, this was a big spring for these linebackers, especially some of the freshmen, too. Justin Williams, Chris Cole, guys that everyone are, is really excited about. You know, really athletic, fast, hard-hitting linebackers. Two of the best in the country. They've been on campus. I'm excited to see them. There's still a lot of developing to do, right? They've only been on campus, on the roster for three months. They've only been in one spring practice for a few weeks. So big time learning curve, but I'm excited to see what they have uh, and the potential that they could bring. So uh, uh, pass rushers, I'm going to see Damon Wilson, a guy we've heard a lot about. I want to uh, see if he can get off um, you know, a block from Ernest Green or Xavier Trust on the left or right side. Sam and Pimba, Gabe Harris, wouldn't surprise me if one of those guys maybe entered the transfer portal. Um, if they don't feel like they're going to see the field much this fall, this is year two for the um, for that trio of pass rushing outside linebackers that they signed in that 2023 class. So someone's going to have to step up and push Chaz Chambliss for a starting job or make sure that they can hold you know, one of the positions for themselves. Michael Williams is going to be kind of a stand-up, bigger outside linebacker now. That's a spot that someone else, you know, doesn't get if they want to get bigger there. But 
pass rushers need to emerge. They, I, it would be nice, ideal, I guess, for Kirby Smart and Glenn Schumann if one guy emerged as the alpha, the number one true pass rusher. Jalen Walker has dealt with, um, you know, has battled some injuries this spring as well. Uh, so I'm not sure how much we're going to see of of him. Maybe not at all. Um, so there are there are big opportunities for a lot of these young, uh, hungry, these youngry defenders, right? Save that word. Use it later. You might get a laugh out of it. Um, yeah, that's all I've got. Just a few names, you know, a few position groups I'm going to keep an eye on. Who are you looking for uh, on G-Day? Let me know in the comment section below. Really appreciate y'all watching, but I want to see you on the website. You can sign up to our free newsletter. That link is down below. It's free to sign up. It's free to read stories on dog posts, so make sure you do that. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you on the website.